We make between 100 and 150 woodworking videos a year. That's a lot, so we're bound to talk about safety from time to time. After all, woodworking can be a dangerous hobby, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So I feel a strong responsibility to our audience to teach safety practices and to set a good example. And that starts with the blade guard on my table saw. While I can't make every cut with this in place, I consider it an essential safety device. But somewhere along the line, blade guards have become controversial. Some folks, maybe even some of you watching right now, get irritated when someone says you should use your table saw's blade guard. I get it. Nobody wants to be preached to. I'm not the safety police, and I live in the real world where many people simply aren't going to use their blade guards. That's your right. But sometimes I hear folks actively discouraging blade guard use. I hear it at woodworking shows. I see it on message boards and social media. Some people aren't content with risking their own fingers. They want you to risk yours too, and they try to convince you that a blade guard is actually dangerous or it provides some false sense of security. I hear things like, a blade guard is just flimsy plastic. It may make you feel better, but it's not going to protect you. Or a blade guard hides the danger. You need to see that spinning blade clearly so you can stay on your toes. I've heard variations of these and other arguments many times over the years. Always from guys with a full complement of 10 fingers and a lot of confidence because they've worked without their blade guard for 20 some years and they've never been cut. Yet. Because, as anyone knows, past experience is not a reliable predictor of future events. Every nine-fingered woodworker I know had years of experience and loads of confidence before he was hurt. And in many cases, a simple blade guard would have saved him. Maybe it will never happen to you. Maybe you'll go through your whole life without a shop accident, or a car accident, or a slip and fall, or a stubbed toe, but you owe it to yourself and to those to whom you may teach your shop habits to indulge me for a couple minutes as I dispel some of the persistent myths surrounding table saw blade guards. Even if I couldn't see through my blade guard, I know where the danger is. I can hear it. I can feel its vibration. I see what it does to the wood as I feed it beneath the guard. I'm not going to forget what's down there and stick my hand underneath to see what happens. I don't need to feel the wind coming off a fully exposed blade to remind me that this is a no-hand zone, just as I don't need to remove the guard from my jointer to see how dangerous those blades are. If I neglect to respect this no-hand zone around the blade, it's not going to be because the guard was hiding the danger and lulling me into some sense of complacency. It'll be because my brain farted, I was distracted, or I was tired, or I was making mindless movements. You know what mindless movements are? That's when you're doing something for the thousandth time, like ripping a bunch of boards into strips, and you start doing things on autopilot. Your mind drifts to something else, and you lose track of your fingers. I have two friends who have lost fingers that way. Decades of experience. It would never happen to them, right? Neither one of them was using a blade guard. In fact, I would venture to say that the vast majority of table saw injuries occur with the blade guard removed. That scary, exposed, spinning blade didn't keep them on their toes because they suffered from an acute case of being human. And so do you. Don't tell me you've never been on autopilot. Have you ever been driving to work and you thought, well, I'm here already. You've driven that route so many times it's almost like you can do it without thinking. Ever run a stop sign by mistake? Ever change lanes without checking your blind spot? If you can experience an occasional brain fart while operating a 3,000 pound automobile that can kill a whole family in an instant, don't try to convince me you'll never allow yourself to be distracted using a table saw. A blade guard provides not just a visual reminder of that no finger zone, but one you can feel that might get your attention before you proceed too far and it's too late. Blade guards are usually made of plastic. If you do a running belly flop on top of your saw, the guard may not hold up and you may get cut. Likewise, if you try to punch the blade Bruce Lee style, it may deflect enough to teach you a valuable lesson about Kung Fu. My point is, blade guards aren't absolute barriers between you and the blade. You still have to use common sense. Like, don't try to force a piece of wood that's stuck on something, like the insert, in such a way that you might slip and hit the blade guard. Nobody's claiming a blade guard will protect you from everything, but it is plenty strong enough to protect you from many of the types of injuries that send people to emergency rooms every day with plastic baggies full of body parts. 
We just talked about how it might protect a distracted woodworker from sliding his hand into the blade. But another common injury occurs when you forget the saw is on. How could that happen? Well, have you ever made a cut and then you checked your workpiece with the measuring tape? Don't lie, you've done that before without turning off your saw. I bet you've even stepped away, maybe turning to a bench or to the saw's side table and tested the fit of your workpiece on your project, intending to return right back and trim a little more away. But the piece fits, no more trimming required. So you turn your saw off, right? But maybe, just maybe, you forget to turn it off. Your dust collector or the shop vac is on and you don't hear it running. Then without looking, you later turn back to lay something on top, misjudging your reach and thank goodness that blade guard was there. Just because a situation like this never happened to you doesn't mean it never will. Just a couple months ago, an experienced YouTuber lost much of his hand in a joiner accident in just such a situation. The machine was running, but he couldn't hear it, and his blade guard wasn't in place. He reached for a piece of wood laying on the jointer bed and without looking, and his whole life changed in the blink of an eye. Because blade guards aren't there for the times when you're alert and careful and responsible. They're there for that one time, that single freak incident when something you thought never could happen actually does. I've heard several people claim that blade guards cause more problems than they solve. What they mean is a blade guard gets in the way when you want to make a non-through cut, such as for a dado or a tenon, or if you want to rip a thin strip with your fence really close to the blade. Of course, you can make many of these cuts in a different way or with a different tool, such as a router table, but those come with their own sets of issues. The bottom line is, we all make some cuts on the table saw that requires the guard to be removed, and we're going to keep doing it, because that's just the reality of it. And if it's a pain to replace the guard once you've removed it, you're unlikely to put it back on, especially if you don't fully understand everything a blade guard does for you. The truth is, a blade guard isn't just there to stop you from accidentally touching the blade. It also protects you in many other ways. For example, have you ever ripped a piece of pine and a little knot was dislodged and flew past your face or maybe even hit you and left a little welt on your cheek? A blade guard would have stopped that. So when you forget to put on your safety glasses or you just don't do it because it's only one cut, the guard will provide another layer of protection for your eyes. And even if you always wear your goggles, the guard will protect your face and your upper body from flying knots, debris, and even larger pieces that you'd otherwise have to eat. Speaking of kickbacks, that little strip of steel in the back that holds your blade guard on is called a splitter, and it is the most important safety device on your table saw. A splitter keeps wood from kicking back at you, and many table saw amputations are caused by kickback that pulls your hand into the blade. Your blade guard splitter is designed to prevent that. I'll link to another video about table saw kickbacks below if you want to learn more. Finally, blade guards improve dust collection by helping to contain the dust that flies off the blade to at least waist level where your vacuum or dust collector can get more of it. Use a blade guard, don't use one, it is indeed your choice. Videos like this are designed to make sure you're well informed so you can make your own decision. But what you shouldn't do is discourage others from using a blade guard. I can't believe this is even a thing, but it is. Some folks actively discourage safety practices out of some sense of bravado or some such nonsense. I don't care if four generations of your family have used saws without blade guards and everyone has great big hot dog sized fingers without a scratch on them. It's a fact that thousands of table saw accidents occur every year that could have been prevented had a blade guard been used. Just because you haven't had an accident yet doesn't mean the person you're talking down blade guards to won't. You're not impressing anyone by bragging about your disdain for safety. I've never been in a head-on car accident, but you don't see me going online telling 16-year-olds that seat belts are for suckers, I've been driving for decades and never needed one. Don't be the guy who's responsible for someone else not being protected when an accident occurs. And that brings me to YouTubers like me. Whether we deserve it or not, people look up to us. They copy what we do. We have a responsibility to set a good example. When we do stupid stuff, we aren't just risking our own well-being. We're increasing the chances that others will be hurt as well. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying everyone cutting without a blade guard is being reckless and irresponsible. The old disclaimer that guards have been removed for clarity is actually true in a lot of cases. I've done it many times. Recently, we made a video about table saw blades that showed cuts without a guard in place 
because the whole point of the video was to show how different blades cut. You had to clearly see the blades in those cases. And when certain non-joinery cuts are made, we obviously have to remove the blade guard to do it. So don't go to some other channel and say I criticize them for not using a blade guard because there may have been a good reason they didn't. I'm just saying that we have to be careful we don't give the impression that we don't use our blade guards whenever possible. If my audience never sees me use one on film, how could they know that the truth is I do use a blade guard for 90% of my cuts off camera and I insist everyone else in my shop does too. Maybe we YouTubers should make a point of showing some footage of cutting with our blade guards in place. If you're doing a build video, mix in some footage showing how you do use your guard when you're dimensioning stock. At least balance it out so every saw shot the viewer sees isn't guardless. If your saw doesn't have a guard, maybe you should consider getting a different saw if you want to make videos that teach and inspire others. Our responsibility to the next generation isn't just to keep the craft alive, it's to keep it safe too. What do you do if you lost your blade guard, or you broke it, or you never had one? Or what if yours requires special tools and 10 minutes of fiddling to take it off and put it back on again? So realistically, you're never going to replace it after you remove it. You're a woodworker, be creative. I once had a saw that required two bolts to be removed to take off my blade guard. There were two holes in the base of the splitter. I cut the holes to turn them into notches that could slip over the bolt shafts so I didn't have to remove them, and I installed wing nuts so I could take it on and off easily without wrenches. I've seen several aftermarket solutions, some for sale, others homemade in magazines and online. Some include dust collection, Google homemade table saw blade guards and see. And if you've exhausted all the possibilities or you just refuse to use a guard, at least install a riving knife or a homemade splitter. It won't protect you from most of the things we discussed in this video, but it will protect you from many kickbacks that can injure even the most diligent woodworker. I'll put a link below to a video about how to make your own table saw splitter. So there you have it, my pitch for table saw blade guards. We should all use them as much as possible. While I do often have to remove mine for certain cuts or video shots, blade guards are required for the vast majority of cuts in my shop and they should be in yours too. See you next time. It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in, because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts, and you're supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.